This person asks, during Bible class, can a woman lead prayer? Since it is not during worship time, on that same note, can a mother lead prayer at the dinner table instead of the dad? Go with me to 1 Timothy chapter 2. <clears throat> I want to say that this is a difficult question. Um, and you might think that I would find this question easy and that I would have a very <clears throat> straightforward answer to it. I don't. Um, I, find it, I find it a challenging question. I want to show you the principles that I think need to be used in answering this question so that you understand and can reason through it yourself um, because it's a tough one. And because I want you to understand those principles. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 8. Therefore, I want the men in every place to pray, lifting up holy hands without wrath and dissension. Likewise, I want women to adorn themselves with proper clothing, modestly and discreetly, not with braided hair and gold or pearls or costly garments, but rather by means of good works, as is proper for women making a claim to godliness. A woman must quietly receive instruction with entire submissiveness, but I do not allow a woman to teach or exercise authority over a man, but to remain quiet. He goes on to explain his reasoning, which we've been through a few times, and I won't go through again right now. But verse 9, I mean verse 8, very clearly says, I want the men to pray. And it's interesting that we sometimes don't talk about that verse when we talk about uh, verse 11 and 12, a woman is to quietly receive instruction with entire submissiveness. The principle here is the principle of male leadership. And we tried to talk about this when we were talking about God's blueprint for the family, for a happy family, that leadership is a responsibility and that God has entrusted it to men. It's a natural physical thing. It's a natural physical thing for a man to want to provide and to protect. It's a natural psychological and emotional thing for both men and women. I shouldn't have just said physical. Psychological, emotional, instinctive thing for women to want to be protected and, and for, to want to take care of the family in a domestic sort of way. That also plays out in the things that men naturally like, that men find entertaining, that men find recreational, versus what men, women find entertaining and what women find recreational. And also in the jobs that we traditionally like and that we sort of tend toward. And it is absolutely a distinction between men and women that is built into God's leadership in the church and God's leadership in the home. And that is the principle of male leadership and female submissiveness to that leadership. <clears throat> so, go back over to 1 Corinthians, and here's where it gets a little bit complicated. 1 Corinthians... You remember verse chapter 14, verse 34 says, The women are to keep silent in the churches, for they are not permitted to speak, but are to subject themselves, just as the law also says. If they desire to learn anything, let them ask their own husbands at home, for it is improper for a woman to speak in church. Now we've talked about this before, <clears throat> and we noticed that this instruction in chapter 14 applies in the corporate assembly of the church. This applies when the church is meeting as a body. And you go back, um, 1 Corinthians 11, verse 17, 18, 20, and 23. It says, when you come together as a church, chapter 14, verse 19, 23, 26, and 28 talk about when you assemble together. Verse 34 specifically says, 
in the churches. And verse 35 says it's improper for a woman to speak in church. And then you back up again now to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 5 says, But every woman who has her head uncovered while praying or prophesying disgraces her head, for she is one and the same as the woman whose head is shaved. We also know from Acts that we had female prophetesses, that women had the gift of prophecy, and that they prophesied. And 1 Corinthians 11 doesn't make any sense if the women are only praying or prophesying in the company of women. Why does a woman need a symbol of authority on her head? if there are no men there, and if she's only allowed to do that in a group of women. So, it looks like, I think, the only way to make sense of this is to say that 1 Corinthians 14, verses 34 and 35, 1 Timothy 2, verses uh, 11 and 12, apply in the corporate assembly of the church. 1 Corinthians 11 verse 5 says that women are allowed to pray and prophesy, and prophesy would be a form of teaching, outside the corporate assembly of the church. But, but, 1 Corinthians 11 5 also says that she must have a symbol of authority on her head. So even outside the corporate assembly of the church, when a woman prays or prophesies, there still must be a recognition of male leadership and female submissiveness. So you see how complicated this is. You see how difficult it is. So now you fast forward 2,000 years and you come here to Mountain Creek Church of Christ and you go back there in the, in the old fellowship hall and we're starting a class and we call on somebody to lead a prayer. <laughs> it's a tough question. I think in our culture, maybe in our subculture, maybe in our microculture, for a woman to lead a prayer in that context would be a violation of our microcultural understanding of male leadership and female submissiveness. But I don't think that in every time and in every situation it would be a sin. You see, I'm drawing a very fine distinction there, and I know that. I find this is a very difficult, a very difficult question. Because women were praying and prophesying, I am convinced, in mixed company, but not in the corporate assembly of the church. So, let's, fin let's look at the second part of this question, which is, what about at home? What about around the dinner table when the family is there and mom, dad, and the children are there? Is it okay for the mom to lead prayer? I think the same principle applies. I think there needs to be a recognition of male leadership. But certainly we have plenty of families where the men take no male leadership or there is not a man or the spiritual leadership that the man provides is in the opposite direction of the Bible and God. There we have many sisters who are trying to rear children without the assistance of a faithful, believing husband. Is it wrong for that woman to pray in front of her children and her husband? Absolutely not. Of course it's not wrong. And I think that a part of a husband's spiritual leadership of the home should include praying with his wife. I think it is very healthy for a husband and a wife to pray together. I think it's very healthy for children to see husbands and wives praying together to see mothers praying. And so I think that it is not wrong for a woman to lead the prayer before supper at home. But I think there needs to be an acknowledgement and it needs to be clear to the children that the man is the spiritual leader and that the, and that the wife, the mother, is submissive to the man's spir spiritual leadership. Um, 
I find nothing in Scripture, zero in Scripture, that would ever say there are restrictions on when a woman can pray at home. But it does say that a woman must be submissive to her husband. Those are the principles that I think must be used in answering those type of questions.